This morning we were singing the songs about a God who is all powerful, all wise. We sang he's a consuming fire and he is high and exalted. So I want to turn to Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah 33 verse 14. Says 14 onwards, sinners in Zion are terrified, trembling has seized the godless. But who among us can live with consuming fire? Who among us can live with continual burning? Says he who walks righteously and speaks with sincerity, he who rejects unjust gain and shake his hands so that they hold no bribe. He who stops his ears from hearing about bloodshed and shut his eyes from looking upon evil. So this man can live with the consuming fire. This can man live, walk, uh, walk with the Lord. If you look at the things mentioned there, brothers and sisters, these are not great things. You don't have to raise the dead. You don't have to preach a great sermon. You don't, have, you don't have to do something, something which is impressive in people's eyes. But if you walk righteously, speak with sincerity, reject unjust, un, unjust gain, and turns his eyes from looking upon evil, we can walk with the Lord. As we heard earlier from the church, what is the Lord required from us? to do justice, love kindness, and to walk humbly with our Lord. So it's a great encouragement for us. Even the, the least of us can walk with the Lord. Least of us can experience Him. I turn to Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah 57, verse 15. Is, thus says the high and exalted one, it's about whom we sang this morning, who lives forever, whose name is holy. I dwell on a high and holy place, but I also with the contrite and lowly of spirit, in order to revive the spirit of the lowly. Wonderful that the one who is exalted above all kingdoms and all rulers and all authority he who is the creator of the universe, he, he will dwell with the contrite and lowly of the spirit. Not only that, he will revive the spirit of the lowly. And dear brothers and sisters, I believe you have that hunger and thirst as you come to the church. Lord, I want my heart to be revived, not only on Sunday, but I want to renew my strength daily. So, there are a few things in my heart in this line. You know, we know, we heard from this church what is eternal life. Eternal life is not living forever because even those who are in hell, they live forever. But eternal life is to know God. It is to know the Christ and the knowledge of God, the personal knowledge of God. That is eternal life. And that even the least of us can have in the new covenant. That is the gospel. You don't have to have a priest. You don't have to have an intermediate or intercessor in between you and God, except Christ, the only one who intercedes for us. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 8. Let's speak about the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. says, this is the covenant which, that I will make with the house of Israel. Hebrew chapter 8, verse 10. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds. I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen, and everyone his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me, from the least to the greatest of them, for I will be merciful to their iniquities, 
and I will remember their sins no more. This is not uh, trying to study some laws by heart and trying to walk according to the law. But when God touches our heart, when God touches our spirit, He writes His laws into our heart. The conscience which is dead in a natural man, God raises it up. And He Himself and comes to dwell in our heart. Even the least of us, even the least of us, God can dwell in our heart. This is the new covenant. A new life comes to our heart. Remember a, new, a newborn baby coming to our home. What a joy and what a, what a peace and love it brings to our home. It's a new life. And Christ, when he comes into our heart, it's not a book that comes into our heart. It's a person. And that personal relationship each one of us can have, the least of us can have a personal relationship with Christ. And not only that, we can come to this life and we can grow. We can grow in this eternal life. You know, Philippians, we read the testimony or the desire of Apostle Paul. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. He says, Whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be in loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord. His hunger and thirst is for eternal life. It says, For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ. And in verse 10 it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death, in order that I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So Paul was not just seeking just to enter heaven somehow. He wanted to know the Lord. He wanted to know the Lord. I remember once Brother Zach was mentioning about these words, this verse, to know him and the power of his resurrection and fellowship of his suffering. But as Zach was mentioning, this comes as a package. The knowledge of God, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. We can't take, uh, exclude the suffering. It's a part and package of it. And, and one, day, one, one way God reveals to us where we can increase our understanding, knowledge of personal knowledge of him, is as we go through suffering, go through difficulties, go through trials, and then the Bible says, the Lord is with us in all the, tri all the troubles. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver, the, deliver him from all troubles, all trials. So how do I know the Lord in detail, in a, in a little more deeper than I have known? It is to tune my ear in the time of trouble to the one who is alive, one who is risen from the dead, one who is deep, Deep in our heart, He is living in our spirit. You know, oftentimes when we go through trouble, we look, for, look outside for comfort and strength. We, we feel like, okay, we wish if somebody could speak to us, some brothers would speak to us. But the Lord who is very present in our troubles, He, he is dwelling in our spirit. He is willing to comfort us. He is willing to speak to us. This word says in Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. So I believe in the new covenant when God builds the church, he wants us to comfort us, but he also wants to build us together into one family, one body, the body of Christ where the disciples will love each other. And like Jesus said, if, when you love each other, 
others will know that you are truly my disciples it's our love towards our god and it's love towards one another and one way is through comfort when god comforts us god will put us in a situations where we may experience comfort through the brothers and sisters around us so do you are you building are you building with other brothers and sisters together dear brothers and sisters or are you keeping a distance are you keeping a distance like you know when peter followed jesus just before the crucifixion it says he was following him at a distance he kept that social distance we don't want to be like that brothers and sisters we believe the brothers and sisters god placed us in the church around us this is chosen hand picked by god the family where i have been placed it is hand picked by god so we must fully surrender our lives into god's hand fully trust that god is working in our circumstances so we see a a beautiful example here jesus is comforting his disciples we can turn to john chapter 13 gospel of john chapter 13 you know these are the events which happened at their supper if you read from the beginning you can see you don't need to turn there now but they were all seated for the supper and jesus stood up he he washed the feet of the disciples and then he said one of you is going to betray me and then he also said where i am going you cannot come now this is not what the disciples expected when they gathered with uh, jesus for the supper they were all troubled and uh, some of them they left their family left their job left everything and started following the lord and uh, they were fully dependent upon the lord jesus christ for their even for everything and they were expecting that jesus will build the new kingdom but jesus said i'm going to go and where i go you cannot follow now and not only that when when peter said i'm going to follow you now jesus had to say to him you're going to deny me three times so there jesus speak to them in john chapter 14 please turn to this verse john chapter 14 verse 1 do not let your heart be troubled believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many rooms if that were not so i would have told you because i am going there to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i am coming again and i will take you to myself so that where i am there you also will be so when jesus spoke to them do not do not let your heart be troubled not not let it fearful we read that later believe in me and believe in believe in god and believe in me he was so sensitive he was so sensitive to the needs of the disciple and uh, he reminded them of eternity he didn't speak of the things of earth he said i'm i'm going to go i'm going to go and prepare a place and i will come back again to receive you to myself so jesus was reminding them this is not your home you are not of this world and i'm going to come back so this verse in uh, first thessalonians we usually read that verses in funeral but it's good to look at that word 1 thessalonians chapter 4 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 It says the Lord himself will descend from heaven with shout with the voice of archangel with the trumpet of God and dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air so we shall be with the Lord you know many things that we worry about every day in our daily life many things that occupies our mind 
on things of earth, we are not going to worry about these things in eternity. I wish we could hear Jesus speaking to us often. Do not be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled, but believe. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe. You know, we, we, we read about Jesus that we have a high priest who can sympathize with us. He knows what a troubled heart is. When your soul is troubled, Jesus understands. Turn with me to John chapter 12, verse 27. John chapter 12, verse 27. It says, Now my soul has become troubled. What am I to say? Father, save me from the hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. So Jesus also was troubled in his soul. But uh, he surrendered. He wanted to do Father's will. He was yielding, willing to yield his life, his soul, his spirit, his plan into the hands of his loving Heavenly Father. So even to us, brothers and sisters, so many things may go in a way which we don't expect. We may plan for something, we try for something, but something else may work out. Should we get surprised or... No. We should say, Lord, I don't want to get troubled in my heart, but I want to believe in you. I want to believe that you are in perfect control of the situation and I'm going to fix my eyes upon you. So, as the Bible says, let us draw near to him with great confidence. Draw near to him with great confidence to receive mercy and to receive grace in the time of need. And it's interesting to note here in John chapter 13, whom did Jesus comfort? Whom did Jesus say that be, do not be troubled? In John chapter 13, verse 30, we read that Judas had left the supper. He was there, but he had to leave. He was not part of the disciples in his heart. Jesus was not his Lord. He had to leave. And John 13, 2, it says, During supper, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas. So, devil already put into the heart of Judas so many things. You know, when you turn to Luke 22, 3, we read like this. Satan entered into Judas. So devil had free access to the heart of Judas. In other ways, Judas had given the password of his heart to the devil. By pilfering, by cheating, by telling lies. And uh, he, he has not entrusted his life into the hand of Lord Jesus Christ. But we read about Peter. You don't need to turn there in Luke 22. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. Here, the devil had to take permission from the, from the hand of Lord Jesus to touch Peter. It doesn't depend upon the devil, but it depends upon you, brothers and sisters, whom you made the Lord of your life. If you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, there are only two kingdoms, kingdom of God and kingdom, the, the kingdom of this world, where it prince is the devil. So let's not give any room for devil in our hearts by hypocrisy, by pretense, by unforgiveness, and let's truly make Jesus Lord of our life. So here, and uh, you know, one interesting thing that we can read in John chapter 6. So they, the people, host, people saw so many miracles and John 6, 26. Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because of you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food which perishes, 
but for the food which endures to eternal life which son of man will give you and verse 28 therefore they said to him what shall we do so that we may work the works of god and jesus said to them this is the work of god that you believe in him that he has sent it's not great things that we do or we claim to do but it is to simply believing in christ believing in his words that leads us to a, a surrender that leads us to obedience you know if you remember once uh, apostle thomas you don't need to turn there in john chapter 11 jesus was at risk of uh, his own death going to jerusalem before, because they were thinking the people will throw stones at jesus and then jesus decided to go thomas was willing to go he said let's go and die with him so he was willing to go and die with jesus christ but when jesus was resurrected and he appeared to other disciples he was unwilling to believe he said i don't believe see he was willing to do great things but he was not willing to believe god in the daily ordinary things of life it's not about great things brothers and sisters it's about simple faith in our daily walk with the lord and see this verse which jesus spoke to uh thomas in verse 29 john 11 29 jesus said to him because you have seen me you have believed blessed are you they who do not see did not see and yet believed there is a greater blessing when you believe god even if you don't see him i believe the lord leads us step by step in our walk with the lord it's wonderful when we come to christ initially maybe we will see many of our answers are heard maybe we may experience few miracles in our life but we may come to a place where we feel like god is not presence we don't feel his presence we don't see our prayers are answered maybe we pray for something then exactly opposite happens we wonder what happened i'm not able to hear recognize lord's voice am i confused you know you know this uh, israelites when they left egypt and then when they came to a place where they really doubted they said is the lord is really with us and bible says that they tested lord when they said if the lord is really with us it says testing god so we can be like them we can taste goodness his life goodness of his life and when may the lord holds some of these things we started we starts grumbling and complaining and started doubting the lord let's not be like them brothers and sisters let none of us have an evil unbelieving heart that we may fall away from this loving and living god turn to 1 peter i believe god want to give many of us a promotion we learned trusting the lord we learned to walk when we can see things but i believe the lord want us to lead to a place where we trust the lord even when we feel our eyes are blinded 1 peter 1 peter write this letter to the people who are scattered because of persecution it says to those who reside in the verse 1 to those who reside as aliens scattered throughout pontia galatia cappadocia asia bithynia who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of god the father by the sanctifying work of the holy spirit to obey jesus christ and be sprinkled with his blood so a few people god has chosen himself chosen by himself according to the foreknowledge of god but they had to reside as aliens they were scattered they were persecuted what do you think of them brothers and sisters if we were like them we had to be scattered because of persecution but what peter reminds them that you are chosen according to the foreknowledge of god 
And then in verse 5, it says, you are protected by the power of God through faith for a, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Is it easy for us to believe, brothers and sisters, when we face difficulties, when we face persecution, to believe that we are protected by the power of God? Yes, brothers and sisters, the Lord won't leave his children or test his children beyond their strength. If the Lord is going to put me into a situation, I must believe that he has prepared me. Otherwise, he wouldn't put me into that place. There it says in verse 6, in this you greatly rejoice, even now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, not one or two trials. It says various trials, so that you, the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable even through tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you will not see him now, you believe him. Can we believe our Lord Jesus Christ in all his promises, concerning all his promises, all his, all his claims, that he is worthy, he is worthy that we may put our trust in him. It says about, says about Abraham, he did not waver in unbelief or he did not trouble himself, he did not let his heart trouble in unbelief but he trusted God and he in hope against hope we read in Bible that he believed. So brothers and sisters let's not uh, yield to the things of external pressure or circumstances. Let's listen to the voice of the Lord speaking to us. Let not your heart be troubled but believe. These two things cannot dwell in my heart together. Either troubled in your heart or trusting in the Lord. The trusting in the Lord leads us to rest. So, a little later today, once you leave this hall, you will forget many things what I've spoken. You'll forget many things what you're going to hear from the pulpit. But the comforter, Jesus said about the comforter, the helper, the Holy Spirit, the one who is indwelling in our heart, if we give him the right place in our heart, if we make him the Lord of our heart, and if we depend upon him, if we don't trust in ourselves or lean upon not on our understanding, but trust in him and invite him to take charge of all our situations, brothers and sisters, we will hear him speaking to us. Let not your heart be troubled, but believe. Let not our heart be troubled, brothers and sisters. Let's trust the Lord in all our circumstances and give glory to the one who loved us and one who is risen and living within our heart. Amen. Praise the Lord for what we heard. I don't want to forget that phrase, what comes in between when Peter writes, um, <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice. See, joy is the mark of true faith. Jesus spoke many things here. So from chapter 13 till 16, end of 16, it's a long talk with his disciples. In between, he said, let not your heart be troubled. He spoke much about faith much about a helper, Holy Spirit, who will be given to disciples. It was, a, a, it was heart's burden of Jesus to communicate them faith. But Jesus knew that it's uh, not adequate until the Holy Spirit fills their heart. That's why he spoke much about the helper in chapter 16. At the end we see that uh, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. And when Peter, when Peter was writing here, I think Peter watched Jesus so closely. And uh, 
he had seen something beyond jesus words he saw jesus life the life of joy life of peace jesus said many times joy which i give no, nobody can take it away or peace which i give no one can take it away but that life which peter had seen it was not real in his life but he had seen something that is what uh, we need to realize brothers and sisters here in verse 6 says in this you greatly rejoice even though now for a little while if necessary you have been distressed by various trials you know why trials peter is saying i have been tested brother was mentioning about luke 22 jesus said satan has asked permission to test but i have prayed but you, you know that faith which god gives need to be tested i don't stand here as an expert who have faith see you know we hear so many things faith collects in our mind through hearing the word watching and listening to the messages reading scriptures but uh, it's all in the mind i can presume that i have faith a lot of faith but what god's word says is that faith which is accumulated in the mind which is good and it has to sink or trickle down to my heart which will produce life but who will do that it's the work of the holy spirit the holy spirit has to bring that from my mind to my heart that's what happened that's where peter struggled in fact he went away from disciples saying uh, i have failed miserably i have failed miserably he went away because he didn't realize everything what uh, jesus had spoken i think jesus had to after resurrection jesus had to encourage him speak to him i think that we read in chapter 21 of john so he realized when the holy spirit came the holy spirit helped him to bring all that which was which was in the mind sinking down to heart and he was a different peter that's what we need brothers and sisters but to hear peter is saying peter himself writes verse 7 that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold which is perishable i asked uh, one summer uh, who are, who is the richest person in this place everybody was thinking oh, who is the richest or who has big car expensive car house and things like but uh, in god's eyes who's the richest here it says the proof of your faith being more precious than gold and silver in god's eyes faith is more precious than gold and silver all the gold silver riches which is there in bangalore when god looks at bangalore he looks for faith which is more precious than all gold and silver and in god's eyes who is the richest person the one who has more faith it's not head knowledge the faith i i can think that i have more faith sitting here under ac but when trial comes i know how much the holy spirit has helped me to bring that faith down to my heart and that because of that greatly rejoice you when you get faith in trial you rejoice rejoice that's what paul writes in the jail philippian jail a uh, jail in the jail he is writing to philippians he says rejoice again i say unto you rejoice and he was in jail he was not in good circumstances situation but he had faith that brought him the joy that's what uh, uh, peter is saying here it's very important that's why trials are very very important in the time of trial our faith is tested and moreover holy spirit wants to bring that faith into our heart so that we will rejoice in trials which is that the gold is perishable even though tested by fire may be found uh, 
to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's much more. When the Christ comes, he'll be so happy, Lord, thank you. You helped me to go through trials and difficulties. Thank you for the trials. You know, all the children who get a good job, one fine day they will thank. Thank for the test which they went through in the school. You know, testers, all those tests and exams have promoted them from class to class, class to class, which helped them to accumulate knowledge, excel in certain fields and get a good job. You know, they thank all the tests and they thank the teachers, thank parents for sending them to school, but which was not pleasant all through. Till they finished the interview and passed, they, they don't appreciate. It's not easy. That's what Peter is saying here. It's not easy. I know, it's only a little while. That's what he's saying. It's only a little while. It's a little while. But the thing is, Holy Spirit will stand with us. Our faith is not tested in the AC room and, and on the comfort zone. Our faith is tested when we go through trials and temptations. That's what uh, I was uh, thinking. That's why it is very important, Hebrews chapter 3, which brother was leading, reading. Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 12, take care, brethren, lest there should be in any of you, any one of you, an evil, unbelieving heart. Evil, unbelieving heart will make you falling, uh, fall away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, lest any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness, deceitfulness of sin. The sin, what is sin? This sin of unbelief can harden my heart. We have to encourage one another. Brother, you are going through trial so that you will be promoted and you will rejoice at the end of it once you are promoted. But now, the trial, I want to encourage you. Persevere, persevere, so much. Perseverance has so much scope in the New Testament. The, when we, we have to go through, that's why Jesus said, um, uh, when the lawlessness increases, many, pe many people's heart will grow cold. That means they lose faith. And then their heart gets hardened. Because they didn't persevere or they didn't depend on God or Holy Spirit to help them to see properly. See what is the purpose of that trial. That trial only helps us to gain true faith, tested faith. When we have tested faith, then only we can overcome. That's what happened with Jesus. Jesus, every day there was trial, test, trial, test, trial, test. And finally, he overcame. He overcame. That, that's, that's the faith we have. That's what it says in Hebrews 3, 12. Look at Jesus. He endured, persevered, and he came out. Consider him who endured. See, that is our calling. That's why faith is so important, but not faith of our knowledge. We can accumulate knowledge, but uh, the faith which the Bible speaks about, uh, Peter, Paul, Jesus speaks about, a tested faith, a faith which uh, makes such a difference to our heart. And that results in great joy. And so that we can encourage one another, don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, what is that, uh, uh, don't uh, get discouraged, don't trouble, uh, don't get troubled when, the, uh, uh, when testing is happening. It is difficult, but don't get troubled. See, the, when we don't have faith in the Lord, uh, when we have only head faith, all the things of the world uh, makes us feel difficult. See, that, that's what Jesus said, worries and cares of the world. Why worries and cares of the world? I met uh, uh, some time back a brother who was, who was with us, not here, but... Uh, Suddenly, when I was talking to him for five minutes, I realized he was so appreciative of this health and wealth gospel. I was thinking, what happened? See, the, see he was tested by money, maybe, uh, difficult situations. But uh, then he felt that, oh, uh, prosperity only can help me. So, but uh, what Paul says uh, in Philippians 4, be content 
He, he also says that I know how to be content in every circumstances when, uh, when I have riches, when I don't have, when I have full stomach or hunger. But that is the true faith. He, he was tested. But why this prosperity and health, wealth, gospel uh, attracts me? Because I want a shortcut. This money will solve my problem. But what happens when the money goes, when money doesn't come? That is, uh, do I have real faith or uh, uh, troubled by, or uh, I succumb under pressure? That, that's what very important, brothers. I was thinking about, uh, yeah, let's turn to Luke chapter 22. It's very important what Jesus was praying. See, Jesus was saying that verse, I think 22 verse 31, Jesus was saying, the, which we read earlier, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. See, Satan has asked permission, but I, I'm giving him permission. But uh, I am praying you, verse 32, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And once you are turned away, strengthen your brothers. What do I do? So when the trial comes, the Jesus says, hold on your faith. The faith, a tested faith which will uh, strengthen your heart. And with that strengthened heart, you tell your brothers. That's what we read in Hebrews 3.13. 3, Encourage one another with that strengthened heart. Hey, don't give up. At the end of the trial, you will receive faith which will help you to stand firm in persecution, in trouble, difficulty, whatever it is. Like Jesus. Jesus stood. Whether money was there, even till death, he was tested, but uh, he stood strong. That is strengthened by grace. That's what we read in, I think uh, it's in Hebrews chapter 13, verse, yeah, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. Do not be carried away by varied strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace. This is true faith. When the true faith is there. The, our heart is strengthened even though when we go through trial, temptation, tribulation, persecution, we come out having this strengthened heart. Then we can strengthen each one another, encourage one another. So uh, saying that, don't succumb under pressure. Don't succumb under trial. When you uh, persevere, then you will receive true faith. That's what uh, Peter was saying. See, you... The faith tested by fire in, in, in trials. And that faith will bring joy to you no matter what circumstances you go through. It is not just a head knowledge. It's when you go through trials and difficulties, you will not succumb. You will have full joy like Jesus. That's what Peter was saying. Peter saw Jesus going through trials so much, which I think we don't have full complete picture of it. But Jesus had a different faith. The joy, the way he died, there was difference which Peter saw. And he observed all through his life how he was committing everything to one who judges righteously. He didn't raise his voice to anyone. He didn't fight with anyone. He didn't argue or he didn't try to prove he was not justifying himself. Nothing. He committed everything to God. But he had full of joy. God supporting him. He had that heavenly faith. That Peter saw. When After seeing that, he said, I want this. But he failed. That's what uh, here. Uh, sorry, I, I wanted to complete that. Uh, <clears throat> Luke 22. Yeah, Luke 22 where Jesus is saying, I prayed that your faith may not fail. Jesus is not saying that, I'll, I'll pray that you will not face this temptation. No, that is required. He has to fail. But the after failing is their faith. You may be persecuted. Is there faith? What is the outcome? Is the faith? Has faith come? Or have you got hardened? Hardened by the deceitfulness. Hardness has come or faith has come? If the faith is there, hardness is not there. Uh, if the faith is not there, hardness will come. The fear and anxiety, hardness. I, I can't withstand anybody, anything. I can leave God saying, oh, no, no, it is too much for me. It happened. It happened with Judas Iscariot. 
So I, I was thinking about Abraham. See, Abraham's life was also like that. He was a normal man like us. At the age of 75, he got faith. God spoke to him. He got faith. And faith softened his heart. He decided to leave everything. And uh, the things of the world was not so real to him. It was something not so important. He was a rich man in Ur Chaldean. But uh, he said, no, no, no. Uh, he told Sarah, uh, I'm just going. And Sarah, I think Sarah had a lot of respect for him. Sarah had seen this man, a man of faith. Sarah said, yes, my Lord, I'll come with you. And where are we going? He says, I don't know where we are going. It is much more difficult to believe that. I mean, Sarah, really, I appreciate Sarah's faith in this man of God. See, when faith was there, there was power in him. And uh, Sarah could recognize that at the age of 75. Then God promised him, like we heard, he did not waver in unbelief. And he refused to look into himself. Do we have that faith? Lord, I refuse to look into my situation, circumstances, my capacity, my problems. Lord, does this happen to me? No, we look at the promise of God, the precious and magnificent promises. We look at God and his word and we count on him and we walk by faith. That's what happened with Abraham. But slowly, maybe later, 10 years later, when his faith was tested, he gave in to pressure. And he produced Ishmael at the age of 87. See, the, when the faith went down, he, his eyes became dim. Things of the world, his capacity, oh, now I have capacity. Sarah, anyway, she's barren. Maybe I can produce Ishmael. See, when the faith went down, he became blind. And then again, God helped him to gain faith. At the age of 98, 99, 100, he gained his faith back. Then he got faith. Lord, you can do this. You, you alone can do this. And that is the time it says, I think in Romans 4, it says, he refused to look into himself and he refused to look at Sarah also. That's how it is, brothers. When we go through trials, it may not look okay, but we trust God. Lord, you will do it. You will take us through. I believe we depend on the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus said. Do not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I will do it. I told you I will do it. That's what when New Covenant started, uh, the two things. One, Zechariah, God told, no, I will give you a son. He was in disbelief. Even Mary, I will give you a child. She was, it's, it's a miracle. It's a supernatural miracle. That's how our Christian life will go through. Uh, we'll, we go through such kind of Christian life. Then, the, again, he got a child, promised child, and he was so happy. And you know, somewhere he be, his faith started going down, and his son became more real to him than God. Uh, maybe about 15 years, uh, it was going down, 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 down. God had to tell him, Abraham, no, something is wrong. Your faith is going down. I want to test you now. I will test you. Just take your son and sacrifice him. I'll give you three days' time. Walk up to Mount Moriah. And now he had to exercise his faith. He sought God and he got the faith back. And then he said, Lord, I know. I'm sorry. I, I became blind with my son. Son became more real to me than you. And Lord, please give me faith. And he took step and went. He said, my God can raise my son from the death. That's the faith he had. And he sacrificed, and we know what happened. See, this is the trial. See, at the end, what, what, is the, what was the outcome? He had tested faith, and the true faith. That may, made him so joyful. Till today, he is our father of faith. So this is very important, brothers and sisters. See, we may think that we have faith, but it has to be tested. In going forward, we don't know what kind of situations and circumstances we face, but to, all this starts with us every day, going through little, little temptations, little, little trials, maybe financial trials, um, sin, uh, we, our battle with sin. And if we keep passing this test, one day when something uh, God allows, and he knows that he will never allow us 
to be tempted beyond our ability that day we will stand and it's not it doesn't happen all of a sudden oh when something big happens i'll be able to stand no if i don't pass the test each day and that day i i may not be able to stand may the lord help us so that uh, we will not succumb under trial we will triumph under trial and we'll ask the holy spirit to help us to uh, have that faith precious faith so that we will be able to stand and rejoice may the lord help us praise god for what we heard i was encouraged to think of this verse acts 22 verse 14 one of the young brothers in our midweek group had sent this um this is paul's testimony the god of our fathers has appointed you so he is saying what brother ananias uh, who was sent by god spoke to paul to encourage him and uh, he says the god of our fathers has appointed you to know his will to see the righteous one to hear an utterance from his mouth acts 22 verse 14 and uh, brothers and sisters just like this is what you know some brother spoke to paul and he took it to heart and i want to see and i want to say confess for myself that god has appointed me to know his will to see the righteous one to see jesus and to hear what he has to say is that true can we say amen is that true of me is that true of each of us here that god has appointed us for this purpose we can say it externally but you know to really take it to heart that yes i must hear his voice faith comes by hearing and god has appointed me for this purpose to hear his voice and when i hear the words of god to gather them and to store them for that moment of trial and to see him more clearly to see his glory and and to know his will and uh, what what we heard now that the lord will come he says and will he find faith on the earth the lord will come looking for faith as brother john was saying when he looks at bangalore he sees many people some of them you know uh had stored up currency or stored up gold you know uh and he looks at everyone and he's looking okay but who has what is really precious that precious faith and how do you know whether someone has it or not right because the faith is so precious in 1 peter 1:7 it says the testing of our faith is more precious than gold the testing of our faith is more precious than gold otherwise we think we have faith you know we hear stories of people like you know they've saved up money in some safe locker and then they open it up and it's eaten by termites you know or they gave money and somebody saved it in a <laughs> bank and then they found out that person was telling lies it's not actually there no savings life savings gone do we really have faith is it really true that jesus is our treasure it's only when i go through something that tests our faith and i love the description here it says for a little while if necessary you have been distressed by various trials god does not want to put us through trials but it is in his eyes for a little while if necessary because that true faith is so precious and i was really encouraged brothers and sisters to to challenge myself to say am i wasting the trials in my life or am i getting that that faith that god wants me to have you know like we just heard from brother john is my heart troubled am i turning my eyes on myself am i looking at someone else you know my my wife for example or someone in my family or my children or am i hearing god's voice am i seeing the righteous one am i knowing his will because god has appointed me for that and i don't want to waste my trial i don't want to waste the situation where i can find this nugget of gold um and uh you know 
find something that is precious that lasts for eternity. Yeah, it's if necessary, the Lord allows it in His wisdom for a good plan and purpose so that I can have that, that treasure that no one can take away from me. May the Lord help us. Let's bow our heads in prayer.